have a passion in my heart to fight for the families who most need a champion. Be the good beginning of the final sprint. Presidential candidates beat the campaign trail while Valley residents decide who to vote for. This is News 3 at 5 with Karen Brown. Good evening, everybody. The countdown is on to the November 7th election. In just 16 days, Valley residents will cast their vote for the next president of the United States. The latest Newsweek poll shows Al Gore with a 3% lead over George W. Bush among registered voters. But among likely voters, Bush leads by 7 points over Gore. As Jim Hanchett tells us, Gore finds himself in Bush territory today in Dallas, while Bush held a campaign rally in Austin. Clobber somebody. If uncommitted process. voters split equally between George W. At Bush. Jim Hanschett, NBC News, Washington. All right, and you can cast your vote early for the general election. You just have to be registered to vote. To find out where and when early voting takes place, log on to our website at kvbc.com. Click on links. And more politicking here in the Valley tomorrow as four GOP governors will be here in Las Vegas campaigning for Bush. They're from Colorado, Idaho, Utah, and New Mexico. And they will be at a senior center talking about Bush's bipartisanship. Now, to make things interesting, Texas Democrat Hugh Burlinga will also join the governors, except he's currently lobbying for a nuclear waste dump in Texas. Now, Bush supporters say cohorting with Burlinga is a bad mistake. As News 3 told you before, the controversial proposed nuclear waste site at Yucca Mountain will play a big factor in which candidate gets support from Nevada. And of course, anything that can put a chill in any campaign is talking about that nuclear waste dump. And when we talk about chills, let's talk about our weather. It is incredibly uh, dark outside. As you can see the cloud cover out there, those clouds maybe look like rain. You're looking at a live picture from our Fitzgerald's camp. Some snow fell out at Mount Charleston today. And how cold will it get tonight? The lady with that answer is, of course, Rachel Bozing. And Rachel, it definitely looks like rain outside. That's right. And in fact, we just recently had a report of some sprinkles starting to come down around Blue Diamond and I-15. So yes, we've got a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. You saw that picture of the live Fitzgerald's camera picture showing you the blanket of clouds. And that's pretty much been over the valley the entire afternoon. The wind came true. We knew that was going to happen. The clouds are hanging around. And now the final factor, the rain starting to come down here in the valley. Isolated showers. Let's check out the satellite, combined satellite and Doppler radar showing you exactly what's going on. You can see there we are in Clark County and you can see some of the green starting to move on into the area. Lots of clouds is actually coming at us from the south and the southeast and it will wipe across the valley in the next several hours. So we could see some isolated sprinkles. I'll have your complete forecast in just a few minutes, but that just gives you an idea. We've been hanging around the 63 degree mark all day, so it has been chilly. Back to you, Karen. All right, thank you, Rachel. Definitely feels like winter. Well, tomorrow, some folks who live near McCarran Airport will get a second chance to confront airport officials. That's because McCarran Airport is in the process of expanding, and that means the families will have to move to make way for a new terminal. Now, you're looking live at McCarran right now from our Mandalay Bay Cam. Here's how it would work. The proposal would level about 330 homes and apartments in the area from Russell Road North from Spencer to Paradise. Now yesterday, this was the scene as hundreds of homeowners huddled around large maps showing what the re road relocation is all about. Airport officials say they will pay market value for the homes and will also pay for relocation expenses and closing costs. A second meeting will be held tomorrow night at 7 at Cannon Middle School. You see it right there. Well, things are changing on the Strip. Harris Casino has come up with some new rules to get rid of some old ways of doing business. And that means no kids or problem gamblers allowed. As Anquinette Moon explains, Harris says it simply wants to attract the right kind of customer. Flashing lights, the luck of the draw, a scene that draws millions of people to Harris every year. And while the company wants your cash, now they won't take it in certain circumstances. We won't cash welfare checks. We won't cash unemployment checks. Uh, we're not going to encourage people for whom gambling would be a stretch on their particular budgetary uh, circumstances. Tours we talk to say that's a good idea. Welfare checks should be for welfare if people need them, right, Michael? They need for food, this is essentials, but not for gambling. And there's more. As a part of their new campaign, Harrods will not advertise near churches and schools, won't advertise in college newspapers, and children's clothing and toys with the Harrods logo will be removed from their gift shops. The reason for that is we don't want children to have the feeling uh, when they're age 
uh, 17, 16, or 15, uh, that uh, they're a part of the casino uh, experience. But Marco Pinto wonders if they're sending another message. What they're trying to do is discourage strollers and an inconvenience to them. It's sort of what I think. But Harris says they're simply being responsible, making sure the people who play here should really be here. It's just we want the right people. Antoinette Moon, News 3. All right, people will still be able to buy gifts for kids at Harris Gift Shops, but again, children's items will no longer have the Harris logo on them. The company says it just sends the wrong message. We'll take a look at this. More violence overseas today. Take a look at these cars on fire right here as young Palestinian kids ignored warnings of danger, throwing Molotov cocktails at Israeli soldiers. Now, Palestinian women marched in protest against the outcome of the weekend summit in, G in Egypt as well. They say they aren't satisfied with a statement signed by Arab foreign ministers, saying they didn't condemn Israel as harshly as they should have. Meanwhile, the government in Yemen wants to know how a suicide bomber got a fake ID card to move into a town near where the attack on the USS Cole took place. Now, the suicide bombing killed 17 U.S. sailors aboard that Navy destroyer. Yemen officials say all papers submitted for the fake ID are missing from the registration office. They also say they found three more homes they believe the two bombers used before that attack. Well, back here, the Space Shuttle Discovery crew didn't come home today. That's because the landing was scrubbed because of bad weather in Florida. NASA said the 17-mile-an-hour winds would have interfered with the landing, so it's been rescheduled for tomorrow at 11.51 in the morning. If you want to try and catch it, the astronauts are returning after an 11-day mission to prepare the International Space Station. Well, some bad news back here on the ground. A new study shows that one day there may not be enough fresh water to go around here on Earth. The World Resources Institute says fresh water systems are being environmentally degraded. Experts say we're simply using more water than the Earth can provide. They say we could run into problems by the year 2025. Well, yesterday we told you that we could see a shortage of water here in the valley by 2002 because of our rapid growth, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Becoming a parent isn't always easy. Hear how one valley couple is making their dreams come true. That's next on News 3, where news comes first. I believe we need to encourage personal responsibility so people are accountable for their actions. And I believe in government that is responsible to the people. That's the difference in philosophy between my opponent and me. He trusts government, I trust you. I trust you to invest some of your own social security money for higher returns. I trust local people to run their own schools. In return for federal money, I will insist on performance. And if schools continue to fail, we will give parents different options. I trust you with some of the budget surplus. I believe one fourth of the surplus should go back to the people who pay the bills. My opponent proposes targeted tax cuts only for those he calls the right people. And that means half of all income taxpayers get nothing at all. We should help people live their lives, but not run them. Because when we trust individuals, when we respect local control of schools, when we empower communities, together we can ignite America's spirit and renew our purpose. What's the most important ingredient to a successful business? It's customer service. It's no secret that businesses who engage in customer service are leaders in their industry. Assessing your customers' needs and fulfilling those needs will play a major role in your overall success. Satisfied customers are the key to making any business prosper in such a competitive market. We challenge all businesses to step up to the next level of service by putting customers first. The preceding message was brought to you by businesses who believe in putting customers first. As a lawyer, Shelley Berkeley recommended political contributions to judges to help with legal problems, dismissing tickets, reducing charges, and lowering fines. To gain favor, Berkeley advised giving a county commissioner's uncle a job and another commissioner a daiquiri concession. She said it's the way business is conducted in Las Vegas. The Review Journal wrote, these revelations raise ugly questions about Shelley Berkeley's judgment and integrity. Tell Berkeley, we don't do business her way. Closed captioning is provided by Sprint, the point of contact. You're watching Channel 3, where news comes first. This is News 3 at 5. And welcome back, everybody. Last week, News 3 introduced you to Rick and Sandy Borba, a Las Vegas couple desperately trying to have a child. As Beth Fisher shows us, after no success on their own, they've turned to Dr. Bruce Shapiro in the Infertility Center of Las Vegas. The first 
step in a trial transfer, measuring the depth of Sandy's uterus to see how far in the doctor needs to position the embryos. So first, I'm just gonna put in a speculum, just like any normal exam. It's an uncomfortable process Sandy is willing to go through if it means holding a child of her own down the road. I want, I want my own we son want or daughter. You know. child it almost happened for Rick and Sandy twice, but those pregnancies <laughs> ended in miscarriage. Um, it's, it's very scary, and the, the third time we get pregnant, which I know we will, is going to be very scary. Uh, what if, because three is the number where they really start worrying. Well, she's a very good candidate for IVF. Um, patients who have had tubal pregnancies in the past are the patients who do quite well with, with in vitro fertilization. Today, Dr. Shapiro is checking Sandy's uterus and ovaries with an ultrasound to make sure everything looks good. And we want the uterus at this point in time to be very thin because this is the time just before uh, we're going to start stimulating. And that's exactly where it should be right now. Now we're just going to take a look at the ovaries. We want to see if there, is, there are any cysts on the ovaries. And there's the ovary on the right side, and that looks perfectly normal. Then comes measurements. 33 by 23. And the exam is all done. Beth Fisher, Perfect. News 3. Okay. And we will follow Rick and Sandy each step of the way and keep you updated on their progress. Well, you know, the temperature is dropping outside and the snowflakes are covering Mount Charleston. It's a sign that winter is finally here in Las Vegas. Rachel Bozing has our chilly, complete forecast next on News 3, when news comes first. The Governor of Nevada. Last year, John Porter helped me give Nevada seniors historic prescription drug coverage. John's leadership was amazing, and the law was passed in the Senate unanimously. Then I received this, a letter from Shelley Berkeley. So dishonest, it threatened to stop us from giving Nevada seniors the medicine they need. Shelley Berkeley, once again, you have misled the people of Nevada. When is it going to stop? Join me in supporting John Porter, because this is all about Nevada's future. According to recent studies, the teeth of Southern Nevada children are among the most decayed in the United States. Hi, I'm Dr. Dwight Brooks with Cascade Valley Dental. We added fluoride to our water supply this year. This will help to improve dental health, especially for our children, by reducing decay in the future. Studies published this year also show that fluoridated water might protect bones from fracture as we get older. So drink up, Southern Nevada. This message is brought to you on behalf of the Southern Nevada Dental Society. Hello, I'm Senator Richard Bryan. I know what it takes to stand up to the special interests in Washington. It takes someone like Ed Bernstein, who's independent and can't be bought. I've known Ed for years. He won't back down and let Nevada become the nation's nuclear waste dump. He'll see to it that seniors get prescription drug coverage, and he'll protect a woman's right to choose. Ed's a fighter, and he's someone that I trust to take my place in the United States Senate. Ed Bernstein, a senator on our side. movies play? What movies worth seeing? Find out. AT&T Digital Pocket Net Service with free unlimited access to Hollywood.com and more. Wireless from AT&T. Your world close at hand. AT&T Digital Pocket Net Service. The only way to get access to the wireless internet without using any of your calling plan minutes. There are real differences between Lois Tarkanian and Chip Maxfield. Differences that matter to you. Lois is an educator with strong ties to our community. Maxfield is an engineer with strong ties to builders and developers. Lois supports our master plan and will work to preserve our neighborhoods. Maxfield has worked for zoning variances in favor of commercial and high density development. Lois Tarkanian will preserve our quality of life. What will Chip Maxfield do? Lois Tarkanian, because there is a difference, a real difference. Today's medical update is brought to you by Inside Diagnostic Imaging with two convenient locations. If you're looking for a unique Halloween costume this year, the San Francisco Opera Company may be able to help you, if you've got a lot of cash, that is. This weekend, they're selling dozens of costumes used in their productions. The costumes are pretty extravagant, and so are the prices. Some will cost you up to $5,000. Dollars. Yeah, $5,000. Isn't that incredible? If I spend 20 on a Halloween costume, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Do you know what you're going to be this year? I think I might be a hippie. I saw that movie, <laughs> Almost Famous. Have you seen it? No. It's great. It 70s, is. 70s, yeah. 
love that Thanks. stuff. What and about you? you? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's I, I, a secret. It's a secret. It's a secret. I've never a dressed up as an adult, so oh. that's, I'll have to think about it. As an adult, it's been many moons since I've donned a costume. Oh. Whatever. The weather, though, is uh, certainly feeling very fall-like. Very, Halloween. very chilly. Absolutely. You definitely want a jacket or a sweater or something if you're heading outside today. Let's jump outside and check out the current conditions at this hour. We're doing that lovely pan thing that I love with the Fitzgerald's camera, which basically means that the picture is moving. We're moving across the valley. And a blanket of clouds in effect throughout much of the afternoon in place. And right now we are getting some reports of some isolated sprinkles some areas across the valley. The uh, temperature is 63 degrees. The humidity is 39 percent. The wind is out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour and the barometer is 29.88 inches of mercury and rising. So here's where we definitely did really well when it came to the forecast. The wind came into play. The clouds came into play. The rain started to come into play. We kind of dropped the ball on the temperatures. We've only done a range of about four degrees throughout the entire afternoon. We were thinking that it would get a little bit warmer than it actually has. Here are temperatures elsewhere around the valley. Most people hanging around in the 60s, 62 degrees in Spring Valley, 64 in North Las Vegas, 65 in Henderson, 64 in Nellis. A little cooler, 55 degrees in Boulder City, 36 degrees up on the mountaintop. And as Karen mentioned, yep, they've seen some isolated snowflakes and raindrops up there. And I'm told that if you are heading up to Mount Charleston, don't do it with your regular tires. A lot of people going up there and not putting on chains or not being prepared for a little inclement weather. If you're going into the higher elevations, you should probably be prepared. Just a thought. Just a thought. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, here's the rainfall and as I mentioned, a little bit of snowfall up on the mountaintop over the past uh, 12 hours or so. And as you can see, we are getting some and what it looks like, Doppler radar indicated rainfall coming from the south and the southeast, and that's actually going to make its way across the valley. And right now, a lot of this is probably Virga, where we got the report of some sprinkles uh, was right around Blue Diamond and I-15. So it's not out of the question that if you happen to start moving towards the spaghetti bowl, that you could see one or two showers. So keep that in mind. The sprinkles are going to take place throughout the evening as well, and we do have a chance of those showers hanging around tomorrow as well. Here's kind of a bigger picture showing you what's going on. As I mentioned yesterday, we do have that low pressure system situated over the border between California and Arizona. That low, the airflow around that low in a counterclockwise manner, so that's why we are getting our rain at this point from the south and from the east, and for much of the afternoon, getting our wind from the north. So we've been dealing with cooler temperatures thanks to that northerly wind. And the wind, yeah, it's been cranking just a little bit. Uh, right now, not so much, but it's been gusting up to about 23 miles per hour, so something to deal with as well. Where the main action is in terms of very severe weather, tornado warning in place right now for central Oklahoma and right around the Oklahoma City area. So if you have friends there, uh, don't call them right now because they're, of course, uh, making way and going into safer places. But just know that that's what's going on there. 61 degrees right now in Chicago, 60 degrees in Minneapolis, 76 degrees right now in Miami. And coming back home, 79 degrees, the normal high for this time of year. Our low 60, we topped out at what? 64. Huh? Yeah. The low 60, the high 64. That's what's going on. Cold outside. Your sun will rise tomorrow at 6.55 a.m. We'll fall back to about 60 degrees by prime time. We're at 63, 60 by prime time, 58 by late night, 57 degrees in the sunrise hours. 67 is what we think we'll crank it up to tomorrow. There is a slight chance of showers tomorrow as well. Out of the lake, we'll fall back to 60, top out at 74. Chance of showers hanging around in the overnight hours and into tomorrow as well. Same scenario up on the mountaintop, 33, 45. Snowflakes, for the most part, that will stick above 8,500 feet, just to let you know. Over the next several days, here's what you can expect weather-wise. We're thinking that on Tuesday, things are going to dry on out 72 degrees, 74 degrees Wednesday, 71 degrees on Thursday, 71 degrees on Friday as well. So today was the day that we absolutely anticipated one would want to do what? Probably stay inside, play some games with the family, yeah, watch a movie. crack a book, read a book exactly, watch a movie, yeah. just kind of chill out on the couch. Definitely, and people should remember to leave a little bit early tomorrow morning for that Monday morning commute. Whenever there's rain, it's a it's a mess. That's right. Yeah. Definitely uh, catch John Fredericks tomorrow morning. He'll let you know what's going on at 5 o'clock, and we think there is a chance that there could be some yep. showers. Thank you, Rachel. Yep. All right, up next in sports, Rick Strasser will bring us some surprises from week 8 of the NFL, plus a look at the spark the Rebels needed to win last night's homecoming game against Wyoming. That's coming up next in sports on News 3, where news comes first. On prescription drugs for seniors, there is a real difference. John Porter's plan helps only 5% of Nevada's seniors. But in Shelley Berkeley's plan, every senior is eligible under Medicare. Porter's plan gives state funds to insurance companies and lets them decide how much you pay and which medicines are covered. 
But Berkeley's plan is voluntary, lets you choose your doctor and your medicine, while Medicare helps pay the bills. Shelley Berkeley, protecting all of Nevada's seniors. Fletcher Jones Toyota is having a giant construction sale. We're building a big, beautiful new showroom, and all remaining 2000s must be sold right now. This is a chance to hammer out the deal of a lifetime. Nail down a price for a payment you never be possible. Call 457-2000. Better yet, drive over to 3175 East Sahara. But please hurry. Nobody's cheaper than Fletcher Jones Toyota. I'm Bill Henderson, candidate for Family Court Judge Department J. I would like to thank you very much for the results of the primary election in which I outperformed three very strong opponents. Once elected, I am committed to resolve cases as fairly, as economically, and as promptly as possible so that parents and children can get on with their lives. I would greatly appreciate your continued support for Bill Henderson, Family Court Judge Department J. Paid for by the committee to elect William Henderson. Okay, that's the commission race. What about family court? Another man versus woman race. What about the woman? What about the woman? She is a woman. Should that matter? Gender shouldn't matter. She's single. No kids. Well, in family court, is that a good thing? What really matters is experience. So who has the most experience? Youth. Phil Buth. More cases, more trials, more endorsements. What about the woman? She hasn't handled enough trials to tell. Jesse, you're the attorney. Has anybody heard anything about her? Phil Buth. <laughs> All right, and welcome back, everybody. NFL is just on fire. I tell you what, they had a lot of big surprises today, too. The Rams, they've scored 30 more points in 12 straight games. They were hoping their trip to uh, Kansas City today wasn't an unlucky 13, but yeah. we'll see. For Kurt Warner, it was unlucky. He took the hit here. He broke a bone in his little pinky on his throwing hand, and he would left the game. Kansas City was on target all day. One, 24 other scores from AFC home teams. Raiders all over the Seahawks, 31 to three. Colts win. Titans over the Ravens, who haven't scored a touchdown in a long time. Steelers win, and the Redskins win in Jacksonville. After the Rams lost, the Vikings were the last unbeaten remaining, hosting Buffalo. Seven, the final score. Other scores from NFC home teams. Cowboys win. Ricky Williams, a big day for the Saints. Eagles over the Bears. And the Panthers beat the 49ers for the fourth straight time. Last night, UNLV put itself right back in the Mountain West hunt with a big 42-23 win over Wyoming at homecoming. The win puts the Rebels a game and a half behind front-running Colorado State. Bet you can't guess who the spark came from. Well, only the Rebels MVP thus far, possibly the MVP of the league. Jason Thomas didn't start because of a foot injury, but returned in the second quarter and promptly marched the team 80 yards in four plays. He rushed for a score and, an, and threw for another the spark at the right time. Everybody was glad to see him, you know, bouncing around and doing his thing. And, and JT, I mean, he was hurt, but he, was, he wasn't going to stay out. He's not the type of player that's going to just sit out and let the, the show go on without him, you know what I mean? So he wanted to get in there and be a part of the action. That just showed a lot of character on JT part because he know he's still bothered by the ankle injury. He just came out and just played a good game, you know. He didn't practice. He practiced like twice this week. But he came out and, and kept his poise and just and played good ball. To golf, where the U.S. took a big lead into the final day of the President's Cup against the international team. Shot of the day came from the international squad. Carlos Franco on the par 5 12th, a double eagle as it rolls in, but the Americans were way ahead. Here, David Duvall drains the putt to win his match and pulled within a point of the President's Cup. When Ernie Els conceded the 15th to Davis Love, that would be it. In match play, they finished the day, but the Americans bring home the President's Cup. Yay! Yay! Two years ago, the International shocked them, so they were yeah. looking for a little bit of revenge and got it. That's great. Yes. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. And we'll be right back with a look at what's coming up at 6 o'clock. Stay with us. I believe we need to encourage personal responsibility so people are accountable for their actions. And I believe in government that is responsible to the people. That's the difference in philosophy between my opponent and me. He trusts government. I trust you. I trust you to invest some of your own Social Security money for higher returns. I trust local people to run their own schools. In return for federal money, I will insist on performance. And if schools continue to fail, we will give parents different options. I trust you with some of the budget surplus. I believe one-fourth of the surplus should go back to the people who pay the bills. My opponent proposes targeted tax cuts, 
only for those he calls the right people. And that means half of all income taxpayers get nothing at all. We should help people live their lives, but not run them. Because when we trust individuals, when we respect local control of schools, when we empower communities, together we can ignite America's spirit and renew our purpose. We must change the way we fund education in this country. I fought for legislation that would have delivered an additional $20 million per year to Nevada schools, not by raising taxes, but by getting our fair share back from Washington. I want to take that fight to the United States Senate. Let's give our children the opportunity to succeed. Let's make Nevada schools the best in America. We are muscle and steel, the original American work machines. And you'll find us at your local Ford store during truck month. Drive a legendary F-150, America's best-selling truck for 23 years, and get unbeatable toughness plus 2,000 cash back. Or check out Ford Super Duty with the most interior room and largest payload in its class. We're your backbone. We're built Ford tough. We're ready for you at your Southern Nevada Ford store. George W. Bush hasn't been saying much lately about a woman's right to choose, maybe because he knows most women won't like his position. Here in Texas, Bush tried to cut family planning funding and to replace medically accurate sex education with abstinence only. As governor, he backed 12 anti-choice measures and says he wants to ban abortion. As president, Bush could appoint Supreme Court justices who will take away our right to choose. Get the facts about George W. Bush's Texas record. Good evening, I'm Gerard Romalo. Here's a look at some of the stories that we're working on for News 3 at 6. Homelessness takes on a whole new look when seen through the eyes of one Las Vegas family. We'll have their story. Plus, the latest on the condition of Hollywood actress Lauren Hutton. Those stories and a whole lot more coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Karen? All right, Gerard. West Coast Canine teams are competing to see who will be top dog. The 10th annual event was sponsored by Metro and featured officers and their sidekicks competing in a variety of obedience, agility, and protection trials. The dogs participated in a couple special demonstrations to entertain folks. So, a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody.